you know, 2021 is Adam and Eve's 50th birthday. And to celebrate, they want to give you a gift. No, 10 gifts. Huh, usually it would be the other way around. If you use our code BATTLE at adamandeve.com, you'll get 50% off almost any one item. Then Adam and Eve loads on the free stuff. That's a gift for him, a gift for her, and something for the both of you. Plus six free movies and free shipping. Remember, that's offer code BATTLE, B-A-T-T-L-E, at adamandeve.com for 50% off almost any one item and 10 free gifts. Goku Black, the body-stealing arbiter of divine justice. And the Reverse Flash, DC's psychopathic speedster fanboy. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. But I'd say the sincerest form of flattery is not trying to kill your superhero husbando. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. What consumes the thoughts of a god? What do immortals dream of with all the time in the world? In Zamasu's case, his one goal was divine justice. Yeah, this guy's got major Final Fantasy big bad energy all over him. As the assistant to Universe 10 Supreme Kai, Zamasu prized, above all else, cosmic order and natural beauty. Oh, that reminds me. Did you know I can burp and fart at the same time? Here, let me try. <gasps> Unsurprisingly, Zamasu despised the inherently chaotic nature of mortals, being seemingly unwilling to lift themselves out of their own cycle of violence and stupidity, like some people I know. Yeah, I know those people too. His heart was clouded. Until the day he met Son Goku. With God Key, Goku could match blows with the god of destruction, Beerus. Their clash nearly destroyed the entirety of Universe 7, a cosmological structure at least nine times larger than our own universe. At most, it could even be as large as 13 times greater than ours. Uh, side note, it's worth mentioning that when two gods of destruction fought, they were capable of casually destroying two of these universes. And since the shockwaves from their punches traveled across Universe 7 in seconds, they'd have to be hitting way faster than light. Goku was tapping into his Super Saiyan God form for this, though clearly not at its full strength. While the exact multiplier for Super Saiyan Blue is unknown, Toriyama himself has directly compared it to the original Super Saiyan form. And don't forget, Goku trained with Whis and fought in the tournament with Universe 6 before Zamasu caught up with him. So by that time, he was way stronger. Here was a mortal with the powers of gods beyond even Zamasu's abilities. Someone who could bring his dreams to fruition. So Zami did what anyone would do in that situation. Kill his master to become the Supreme Kai, wish on the Super Dragon Balls to switch bodies with Goku, and kill every single mortal in the universe. And thus the deity Zamasu became Goku Black. Please, Goku Black, you couldn't be more creative. No, you might be wondering, why didn't he just wish all the mortals dead? But that wouldn't be as fun, would it? Black's got all of Goku's strength and powers, but wielded by a genocidal maniac instead of that lovable goober of a monkey man. And in keeping with Goku's Saiyan heritage and godly key, Black can easily achieve the form of Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. But with a champagneful twist, Super Saiyan Rose. Rose, really? What is he, a suburban wine mom? Watch out before he unlocks Super Saiyan Live Laugh Love! He stole Goku's techniques too, like the instant transmission, where he focuses on a person's key signature to teleport to their location. He's even got the black Kamehameha, which is a Kamehameha, but pink. And with a Saiyan body, he gets stronger and stronger every time he almost dies. He just becomes harder and harder to kill. Which really sucks for the rest of the universe, because Black is kind of like if Goku just snapped one day and used his powers to their full murderous potential. Like the God Split Cut, where he surrounds his hands with a keyblade to slice you to ribbons. He used this very technique to, uh, kill Goku's family. He can even extend this keyblade into a huge curved one called the Azure Dragon Sword, which along with his Kamehameha confirms my suspicions that Goku is colorblind. Actually, Black's Azure Dragon Sword is named after a legendary weapon wielded by one of Earth's greatest warriors, the desert bandit Yamcha. Wait, what? And he can make a scythe and slice open space time itself to create a bunch of shadow clones. Uh, Black, not Crater Boy over here. But his most dastardly weapon isn't a key technique at all. It's the time ring he got from his dead master. This ring allowed Black to travel through time and even escape into Future Trunks' alternate timeline where he had free reign over the entire universe. And let him team up with his best bud, himself, 
Too bad Goku and company showed up to spoil the fun. But wait, isn't Zamasu in Goku's body? How are there two Gokus? There's only one Goku in the multiverse, right? But Goku met Black before he met Zamasu, which means Black existed before Zamasu came up with the idea. And then they killed Zamasu before he could do it anyway, but Goku Black was still around? What the hell is going on? Sure, it's a classic grandfather's paradox. The thing is, Black's time ring prevents him from being affected by alterations to his own personal timeline. So, killing him in the past doesn't change his future, and vice versa. He's almost impossible to kill because even if you do it at one point in time, he still exists at another point in time. And another. And another. And another. And another. Oh god, I hate time travel. Black has crushed Saiyans like Goku, Vegeta, and Trunks. Hell, even Vegito couldn't beat him. He even merged with the universe to become one with everything. Like I said, major Final Fantasy villain vibes here. It took Zeno, the Omni King, the most powerful being in all of creation, to step in and erase that entire timeline just to stop Black's rampage. How ironic. Zamasu's higher calling was the eradication of all mortal life in the universe, and he stole the strongest mortal's body to do it. But in the end, he was always doomed to fail. His quest for power meant nothing against a being that would always be stronger no matter what he did or who he was. And the universe ended up being destroyed anyway. It's like one big cosmic joke with no one left to laugh. You've been running around making messes for too long and now I'm going to choke the light from you. I can't wait to watch you die. Barry Allen, The Flash. <laughs> is one of the greatest heroes in history, an inspiration to many across time and space. And there's no better example than his number one fan from the 25th century, Eobard Thawne. All right, Wiz, we've tackled a lot of stupid names for things in our years here at Death Battle, but I'm confident that Eobard is the dumbest f***ing first name I've ever heard in my life. Eobard was completely obsessed with the Flash and dedicated his whole life to studying the Speed Force like a total nerd. Good luck to him, because there's no way he's figuring that shit out. But Thawne's life irrevocably changed the day he discovered a time capsule from the 21st century. By some strange coincidence, it just so happened to contain Barry's costume. By experimenting on it, Thawne managed to replicate the Flash's powers turning himself into a mirror of his idol. And you can bet he totally crapped himself when Barry Senpai showed up in the future and took him under his wing. It was a dream come true. Until Barry realized that Thawne had fabricated crimes in order to show up and save the day. Disgraced, Thawne promised to better himself before traveling to the past to prove his worth to his hero, to prove that their bond was special. That's when Thawne found out that Barry already had a best friend and a family and a life without him. He didn't matter. He wasn't special. He was just a nobody buried, tossed out in the trash and forgot about, like my Tinder dates do to me. If only. When Thawne visited the Flash Museum in Barry's time, he discovered the secret identity to Flash's greatest enemy that in his future had been lost to time. The one Barry was fated to kill in battle. Eobard Thawne. Wait a minute. Oh, ain't that a bitch? The shock drove Thawne mad. If he couldn't be Flash's best friend, he'd be his greatest enemy. And I guess also ensure his own future death. He would travel from the future to terrorize the Flash family in the past. Revenge in reverse. He'd become the Reverse Flash. Reverse Flash? We're really setting the world on fire with these names today, huh, Wiz? Thawne draws his powers from the negative speed force, which he generates with every step he takes, just like Barry does with the regular speed force. The negative speed force gives Thawne access to many of the Flash's powers, including his mind-bending super speed, enough to travel all across time and space in days. He can keep up with and surpass other speedsters like Barry and Wally. Who once ran fast enough to cross the universe faster than two gods who could teleport. Wally even beat himself in a race, and Barry admitted Thawne was still faster than that. Wait just a second, he beat himself? That doesn't even make sense. But unlike Barry and Wally, Thawne applies his powers more catastrophically, using them to their full potential without any care for collateral. Take, for instance, his ability to vibrate himself through solid objects. Objects like, say, vital organs. And if he did, he'd scramble their molecules, causing instant death. Thawne did just that to Barry's wife, Iris. And Barry, 
did not appreciate it. Fawn's vibrations are so powerful, he can even produce a counterforce that can reverse the destruction of the entire universe. Pretty crazy sounding, but even B-tier speedsters like Jenny Ognats can do the same kind of thing. And when Barry and Wally raced each other, they were tearing up the entire multiverse. Fawn can create shockwaves with a snap, phase into your body and possess you, and even speak at such high speeds that you'll hear his words as though they were your own thoughts. And instead of stealing your speed like other flashes, he can steal your time. Yeah, Thon can yoink decades from your life and age you 80 years in just a few seconds. Kinda sounds like your sex life, oh is. <laughs> but Thon's greatest ability is his unmatched skill at time travel, and he uses this expertise to be as petty and cruel as humanly possible. Thon wasn't a dummy. He knew that if he went back in time to kill Barry before he got his powers, he'd erase himself from the time stream too. So instead, he'd just make Barry's life suck as hard as he could, push him down some stairs, retcon his best friend from history, kill his mom. He even told Barry he'd go back in time and adopt him as his own son. Dude, what the fuck? That's another big difference between Thawne and Barry. Whereas Barry only went back in time to save his mother's life, Thawne often went back in time to try to fix his own mediocre life. He killed his more successful younger brother, his career rival at the Flash Museum, and every single boyfriend his crush had until there was no one left but him. And when she still rejected him, he went back in time again and made her an invalid for the rest of her life. Jesus Christ, this guy's a monster. But wait, Wiz, that's impossible. Grandpappy paradox or whatever. If he went back in time to kill someone, they'd be dead in the future, which means, which, me. Which means he'd never know them and want to go back in time in the first place, right? Wiz, maybe time is a construct with no legitimate unit of measurement other than the meager attempts man has made to understand the incomprehensible world around him. Uh, well, actually, Thawne was just inside the time stream when Barry initiated Flashpoint, which rewrote the universe while Thawne was technically disconnected from it. So Thawne essentially broke. Literally, figuratively, mentally, physically, Temporally. Or maybe he just hated Barry so much it defied the laws of time itself. Whoa. More specifically, he became a living paradox, a being without a past or future, literally without continuity. Not only did this mean he'd be unaffected by changes to his past, it made him effectively immortal. Stabbed in the chest by evil Batman, vaporized by Iris in some sweet, sweet payback, or getting Dr. Manhattan by the big blue god dong himself, Thon was always reborn, unable to stay dead. But more than anything, it made him immune from consequences. Unlike Barry, whose changes to time could destroy all of reality, Thon could do whatever he wanted. He was impossible to stop with no reason to hold back. He survived a hit from Barry while he had the entire speed force absorbed into him, and even Wally's infinite mass punch, which has the mass of a white dwarf star. A white dwarf is essentially the remains of a star's ultra-dense core, which has a mass of over two octaves Octillion tons. And he took one of those to the noggin and just took a nap. Man, he must really hate Barry if a son to the face can't take him down. But he doesn't hate Barry. All of his schemes, all of his machinations, all of his insane timeline shattering threats, all of it was because it was the only way he could think of to spend time with his hero. That's really sad. His costume says it all. He never intended to be the reverse Flash. He wanted to be the Kid Flash. All Fawn ever really desired was to be by Barry's side. In the end though, goody little two-shoes Barry forgave him and then vibrated away his living paradox powers, erasing him from existence. Though not entirely. Barry didn't kill Fawn, he reset his timeline, removing the one thing driving his hatred, his relationship with Barry. Without that, Thon was a normal, happy Flash fan once again. It's comics, Wiz. He'll be back. And when he does, there'll be no running. He'll always be faster. He'll always catch you. And time is always on his side. Still think you can take me? Even death can't catch me. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. But first, let me tell you how to reverse things in the bedroom in a flash with Blue Chew. 
This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. If I've learned anything from years of hosting a show while having very few actual skills, it's that confidence can take you far in life. That's why Blue Chew delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis in chewable tablet form right to your door. Yep, and did we mention you can get Blue Chew's tablets at a fraction of the cost of those other guys? Getting ready to go is simple. Just sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Plus, it's all done online, which means no more awkward conversations with your doctor or waiting in line at the pharmacy. And you can take Blue Chew anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for you. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code BATTLE at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code BATTLE to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. Thanks for sponsoring the show, Blue Chew. But right now, it's time for a death battle! <laughs> it was me, Barry. I was the one who... Uh... Mortal sinners, prepare for divine justice! <laughs> Sir, I'm in need of your services. Stand still and face your judgment, mortal! Okay. Son, we really should have a timeshare. This was a fairly tricky matchup to figure out, least of all for their incredible levels of power. Black could destroy a universe like ours at least 660 times over. I mean, a punch at least as big as a star is really badass. 
but that's in another league. However, there was a lot more to cover than just how many stars or universes they could blow up. At their peak, both Goku Black and Reverse Flash were so impressive, they were removed from time itself, becoming living paradoxes, making any attempt to kill either of them meaningless. Stupid time travel. It's difficult to determine who would figure out a counter to this temporal invincibility first, but it would most likely rely on a combination of speed and smarts. As far as speed goes, it's no surprise Thon definitely had the edge. Yeah, Black's attacks could reach speeds quintillions of times faster than light, but Thorn is a Flash. Even early in his career as a member of the Flash family, Wally West could reach speeds that were impossible to comprehend and calculate. There are numerous examples of this for multiple iterations of the Flash, many of whom Thon was clearly equal to. Plus, he's kind of an expert when it comes to timey-wimey bullshit. And he could likely overpower Black and destroy said time ring too. After all, Thon once generated enough energy to counter the destruction of the entire DC Universe, which is stated in comics to be at least 100 trillion light years in diameter. That's over 1 billion times larger than our own universe, and over 70 million times larger than Dragon Ball's Universe 7. It's sort of impossible to lock down the exact limits of Goku Black's upper strength without getting into lots of assumptions and guesswork. He's obviously stronger than Goku was when he clashed with Beerus, but even being super generous with training and power boosts and multipliers, the gap here is way too wide to be able to just assume Goku Black could match this level of power. The DC Universe is just too big! And remember, Barry and Wally's race almost ripped apart the entire DC multiverse! It's also important to stress that Goku Black is not Goku. Goku's drive and willpower can push through even the most absurd limits to potentially match higher levels of power. Zamasu took Goku's body because he's more than willing to take shortcuts. It's an entirely different mindset. Yeah, and once he took care of that time ring, Reverse Flash had a lot more options than just overpowering Black. With that super speed, he could pretty easily scramble Black's insides or age him to death with a touch. Zamasu may have been a deity even without the time ring, but Goku's body is mortal with a limited range of age. Might have really screwed yourself with that one, huh, Zam Zam? Goku Black was a nightmarish foe, but Thon's experience with time travel, ridiculous levels of hacks, and frankly impossible speed gave him the means to take the win. This fight was definitely not underwhelming. The winner is the Reverse Flash. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Death Battle. If you're looking for something else to watch, Season 2 of Last Laugh is available right now on Rooster Teeth. It's a show all about contestants trying to make each other laugh, but everyone trying their hardest not to. If you laugh, you're out. Watch the first episode right now by clicking the video on the side. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Ah! Ah! Oh no. Oh yeah!